Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Girl Stuff Podcast. Today, we're really excited to be joined by the wonderful Cormac Kite Corin. And if you're watching this, there is a high chance that you've probably seen his face on screen somewhere on the internet in the past couple of weeks. He stars as Harry in the Netflix hit Heartstopper. And um, I guess we could start out by just asking, how are you doing, Cormac? Because I'm sure the past couple of weeks has probably been pretty crazy for you i mean it's probably this is your like first breakout role right and so like what has it all been like yeah i mean it was my first role uh full stop yeah so pretty crazy um it's all been good though like it's strange it doesn't really i thought it would change like a lot like my mentality and stuff but it's not changed at all really like um it's uh yeah, just I feel like you're not we're not really like at that level. Like it's just the followers that change really, and yeah, just staying <laughs> staying the same really. Has have you felt like the reception overall has been really positive to the show? Because I know fans really really love the show, and people have been so like excited online. So have you felt like that positive reception a lot? Yeah, yeah. Um, I yeah, I expected to get like a ton of hate after it. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But um, it's actually been, everyone's been lovely, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, I guess, like, when they're talking to me online, um, they're being lovely. But uh, I don't know what they're saying to each other, like, friendship and stuff. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with, like, the, the fan base. Like, the fan base is all so lovely, so, you know, it's not surprising. But, um, yeah, really happy with it. Honestly. That's awesome. I mean, I know that, of course, you play the villain character yeah. kind of one of the most hated characters in sort of the hard stopper universe um yeah. do you did you like being able to play the villain is that like a bit of a stretch for you like is that something that you like had a hard time like tapping into or what was that like uh yeah it's yeah it's hard obviously um you know they're my friends the people <laughs> but you have to look past that um and completely like change your uh like how you think and stuff to be the character so mm -hmm. yeah just like separate it um like obviously a lot like separate uh, me from harry and uh yeah so sort of just trying to like be harry in my mind when i'm when i'm playing him mm -hmm, for sure well i would love to talk more specifically about the kind of the your origins in heartstopper and how you came to be like be part of the project so melina if you want to get take it away yeah we want to know what originally drew you to the project i know there has been like an open casting call was harry part of that open casting call or did you get the uh, audition by your an agent but I did get um, it through my agent. Uh, like I got, yeah, just self tape through through that. But um, I saw the open casting stuff and credit to the um, actors who did uh, do it through the casting call because you know that's that's big. Like um, just seeing something out there and uh, going for it. Like you can really like learn a lot from that. Like obviously they just went for it and now they're prospering from that. So yeah. Well done to them, but yeah, I just got it for through the self tape through agent. Was Harry the role you auditioned for, or did you audition for another role prior? Um, no, I actually did audition for Harry first time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean that's great. Um, did you read the graphic novels prior to the audition, so you did know about Harry's character and his development throughout the series? um yeah so i got the first self tape um through and i like checked out obviously uh checked out the story and stuff and then i got the recall and uh after that i read all of the books um i think only three were out at the time so um yeah i read a lot through those and harry doesn't have as much a big part in the books but i did um yeah in book three obviously uh there's the sort of arc but um you know we'll definitely yeah not really explored as much but um yeah it was, yeah i read all of them before um get uh doing that really cool yeah yeah i mean harry is not the nicest character how did you prepare for the role i know that some of you guys got helped by alice because obviously she knows these characters best yeah yeah alice was uh brilliant with it um yeah euros as well the director 
Uh, yeah, so preparing for Harry, it's sort of, um, it's definitely more like of a show he's putting on. Like, he's constantly putting on a show for everyone around him. Uh, like, just trying to be the centre of attention, trying to draw everyone in. Um, and, you know, he'll pick on anyone for any small difference they have. But, um, yeah, I was I was actually in also in year 11 at the time, uh, still going to secondary school. So, like... And there's people like that in like secondary school still, um, like state schools, UK state schools. But so I was sort of like uh, feeding off the, that kind of, and um, just trying to make it like as similar to that kind of person as I could really. And yeah, Alice helped a lot with um, like the show aspect. They yeah, they sort of like put that into my mind. The um, like I'm just trying to put on a show for everyone around me. Uh, Euros as well. The, yeah, they kind of like instilled that in my brain like high energy just trying to like make everyone laugh basically but uh obviously not in a very nice way <laughs> mm. yeah and going uh to filming the show i know you guys filmed back in the beginning of 2021 where covid was at like the peak what was filming during like the pandemic like yeah it was pretty it was pretty crazy um my face doesn't really uh, mix with the mask very well either. I've got quite a small <laughs> nose, so they like slip off all the time. So I, I got hammered quite a lot by the um, COVID safety people for like, cause when, whenever I talk, it just literally just slips down. Like I can't open my mouth without it just falling off. So yeah, I got hammered by those guys. Um, but I feel like we all, it, we all very professional. So, you know, it kept, um, we kept going there was like some uh frights but we we kept going and um happily we made it all the way through finished the uh, production um it was weird though very weird like coming off set you had to have the visor on and you know it's, it's weird like like uh knowing that um you know we did that through covid through uh that's gonna uh, be like history so yeah it was pretty crazy like doing it at the time um but it's so it's like so happy to be able to keep working uh and you know do it with such like uh great people um yeah just really good to be honest with me. speaking of the great people you work with what was like your favorite memory from set from set um there's a lot of good ones uh like every day was just uh really fun to be honest um Obviously, we had we played quite a lot of rugby uh, together. I remember this probably isn't one of my favourites, but I remember once it was um, snowing while we had to play. Oh, wow. that was that was tough. Um, and they sort of like set up movements for you to do like uh, sequences for for the rugby, so like pass it along, 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 and then you get a hit. And you know, just <laughs> no one's wanting that role to get hit. But um, yeah, it was pretty tough to play in those kind of conditions. Um, but it's just still fun though, just to play like sports while I was doing it anyway, um, with all these people. Uh, we also had a um, PS4 in the green room, so uh, when whenever we were off, just banging FIFA, all sorts really. Um, yeah, it was great fun. Like daily, it was just so fun to go in, especially I was doing GCSEs at the time, so it was um, quite like. Uh, I wouldn't say relaxing, but um, something to keep my mind off it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Mm. Yeah. So, going off, um, still being on set, but, like, what was your favorite scene to film? Hmm, favorite scene to film. There's, there's, a, there's a few good ones. Um, the fight scenes were fun, but they're, they're exhausting, but... Um, pretty fun uh to do um i'm trying to think the party scene was good as well to be fair um we all had to dance yeah they like set us up um like dancing all in a circle that was pretty uh weird but uh fun to do um especially with the music as well uh yeah that was great fun the party one and what would you say was the most difficult scene to film whether it's someone breaking character or you breaking character hmm one of the most difficult scenes to film uh 
definitely also the the cinema fight was hard. Um, it was like physically exhausting, firstly, and um, also I remember one thing I had to I had to like make a joke um, like about Charlie and Nick, uh, and then every take I had to do like a new one, uh, <laughs> like improvised. So I had to like get all the boys laughing over and over again, just trying to think of jokes. But that was pretty tough, yeah. Mm. Okay, so uh, I don't know about you, but my for you page on TikTok is currently exclusively Heartstopper. Um, the Netflix audience has like taken the show and like loved it so much. What would you say um, as playing one of the most hated characters from the universe? Um, what is like your um, the reaction from fans you got like through TikTok especially? Yeah, I actually got um, I got TikTok recently. Uh, <laughs> they're telling me to get it. Yeah, so I mean, all the all the cast have blown up on it. Um, it's yeah. crazy to see the reaction. Yeah, all like the editing stuff. It's weird to see, but um, it's really cool. Yeah. Uh, seeing all of them all the time just like different stuff as well like I just see like Kit pop up doing an interview Joe like it's so weird like doing so much different stuff they're just everywhere at the moment um, just flicking through it um, yeah super super crazy um, I wouldn't say it feels weird but it feels like it feels strange of course um, but yeah well done to all of them i mean their tiktoks are funny as well i need to start um, posting more uh but yeah i need to hop on i need to think because i don't i don't have to think of it like i feel like i need to get it a bit more you know what i mean because i've only had it for a couple of weeks I need to sift for it a little bit more get a bit deeper into it to um yeah. it's a bit of a black hole to be honest it's it just is, so yeah, it's, it's never constant. ending <laughs> yeah i always hear people saying you just get stuck on it and now i know Literally. what they mean it's so yeah it's a crazy it's a... app um, <laughs> mm. um going away from uh tiktok and before we start playing a little game about Heartstopper, we wanted to know what do you hope people learn and what do you hope resonates with people who watch Heartstopper? um I feel like uh, it's, um, it makes people feel safe uh, and like show people, it shows people like it's, it'll be all right. Um, you know, like the people you're, you surround yourself with um, definitely help a lot. Uh, and to, to um, go out and make those sort of relationships is very important um and also to just like stick with things you know what i mean um charlie uh in the story you know he he Tao's always telling him uh you know uh nick's straight um but he uh yeah he, like he, he has that uh connection like he, he sort of knows but um yeah just don't be afraid to like give things a go really um and like be yourself is a big one i think yeah, I love that. Yeah. Okay, now we're gonna start with a little game of who said it. So we have 17 lines prepared for you. Okay. We're gonna each take a turn giving you a line and you have to guess what character says it. Okay. Some of these are kind of hard. They're very short. Yeah. Melina picked these out and I'm looking at them now and I'm like, I've seen this show probably like three or four times at this point, but I don't think I could get some of these. So let's see how you do. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and just to make the competition even harder, on Monday I did an interview with Toby and he uh, got all but I think two wrong. Oh, so Toby. Okay. Competition. I expect nothing less from Toby, yeah. He's, he's on it he's on it mm -hmm. okay we're gonna start with the first line which is how dare you it's from episode one if that helps at all how dare you that sounds that sounds like me but it's not um how dare you <laughs> trying to how dare you hmm it's so evil i'm sort of sifting i'm sort of um thinking Either Charlie or um, Ch 
Charlie or I'd just go with Charlie. I can't lie. It is Charlie. It, it is correct. correct. It is Charlie. <laughs> Nice Told you these are hard. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is number two. I think a little less hard. Uh, number two is a trio of borderline outcasts. That's Tao. That's Tao. That's I know that Tao. One. That is classic Tao right yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the next one is where is your can do attitude? Hmm. What's your can do attitude? That sounds like um a Nick thing to say. Very Nick yes, thing it to is. say. I love how you're yeah. not even going by memory. You're just kind of going off the vibes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I literally am. I'm just going off the vibes. <laughs> I love Alice it. Is, Alice is amazing with the writing. Like she mm -hmm. makes them all like have different personalities. Like yeah, like you can sort of tell um like, how For different sure. they are so far. But we'll see. Yeah. All we'll right, see. number four. Uh, I want to believe in romance. Mm, I know that one. I know that one. My arch nemesis, Toby. <laughs> Toby one of them. Isaac Henderson. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. And okay. on to the next one. Number five is I don't think he's straight. Ooh. Because that, okay, that sounds like Tao, but I have a feeling it's, um, uh, Tori. I think it's story. Yeah. Yes. Oh my God, you're doing so good. <laughs> All right, this next one. I mean, the lads can see it's banter. I mean, I mean. Harry Green. Harry Green. Don't listen to it. Okay, the next one is, I think, the hardest one we have in here, and it's. Number seven, it's because you're old. Because you're old. This one's definitely just going to be off five. Because um, you're old. I feel like it's got to be Tara Darcy or L. No. Yeah. No? No. Right. no. First no. incorrect one. Oh, no. <laughs> Damn it. It's okay, Wait, can I just say before... Toby. You can still beat Toby. Oh, well, yeah. Can I say before you say it, um, was it Tao? No. It was no. it was Charlie yeah. to Nick in episode oh. three. It's okay, you can still beat Toby. You just gotta get yeah. every one of the last <laughs> ones right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, this next one, probably my favorite line in the whole show. I'm having a proper full on gay crisis. Oh, yeah. Nicholas. Nicholas, Nicholas, Nicholas. <laughs> Love that one, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the next one is Harry, don't let the game go soft. Harry, don't let the game go soft. I know that one. I know that one. Ben. That's sort of actually like a sort of um, uh, Easter egg there. We, we were always talking about that on set. Um, don't let the game go soft. That was sort of like an inside joke between the cast, but it actually made it in there, which is quite funny. Um, I didn't actually see the first time we watched it, it made it in there, but yeah, apparently it did. Um, that's a good one, yeah. Mm. I'm glad you're telling the story because on Monday, Toby was also like insider when the guys were playing FIFA. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whenever there was a soft tackle and there was a foul, game's gone soft. Game's gone soft. Yeah. We need to put that on a t shirt. But yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Okay, next one. <clears throat> Sorry. Next one is I'm a highly qualified hairstylist. Mmm, I know that one. Imogen. Yeah, iconic oh, character. Iconic. Yeah. Her most iconic line is, I don't think, is on this list, which we all know yeah. is, I'm not yeah. homophobic, I'm an ally. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's a great one. <laughs> yeah. I thought that would have been too easy. Okay, the next the next one is a line, uh, number 11, making us watch Avengers or something. I like that. I like that line a lot. Um, and it's Tao, the film guy. I like the Tao, he's, he's clued up with his film knowledge. I like it, I like it. Um, <laughs> he's got all the posters in his room, I remember as well, looking at. Yeah, he's got some good ones in there. Mm. 
Okay. I don't agree with him hating on the Avengers, though. No. Justice yeah, for um, the Avengers. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, it's a different type of cinema, but yeah, <laughs> Tal, definitely not Tal's wife, I can tell. <laughs> not my Avengers posters in the background, giving you a clue <laughs> as to what I'm in favor of. Yeah, yeah. All right. <clears throat> Next line. You shouldn't go out with someone because you feel sorry for them. <sighs> Ooh, shouldn't go out with someone because you feel sorry for them. Hmm. Hmm. I th- I'm gonna go for L. Mm, that's a good guess. That's no. a good guess. No. But no. Can you want? Do you want one more shot? One more shot? Will you one give me? One more it? shot. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I right, got some <clears throat> hard then. Um. Can you give it to me again? You shouldn't go out with someone because you feel sorry for them. Shouldn't go out with someone because you feel sorry for them. This is a hot. Mm. It's a tricky one. It's a bit of a trick question. Tricky one, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna say Charlie. That's also a good guess, but no, it's Sarah Nelson. It's Nick's mom, the iconic no. Olivia Coleman. Oh. <laughs> To be fair, she doesn't have a ton of lines in this show, but the lines yeah. that she That's does true. have, the moments that she does have, we love. Iconic. Mm. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. good. Mm. Okay, the next one is I'm a very muscular individual. Ah, a very muscular individual. Said with a lot of irony. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I feel like anyone I say now is going to be a bit offensive. <laughs> um... Oof. I'm gonna say, um, was it, was it, I feel like Charlie, because he's talking about the world, mm. or no. Good guess. Close. Oh, my second guess would be Tao. Yeah, there we yeah. go. <laughs> we'll give me that one, we'll give me that one, come on, please. please. Go yes, one, you, I will give you that one. <laughs> okay, you. You're tied. <laughs> yeah. Good, good, good. Mm. Okay. Um, the next one is we found another one. Oh, we found another one. Oh, I know <laughs> this one as well. I know it. We found another one. It's either Tara or Darcy. Um, we found another one. I'm gonna say Tara. Oh, mm. oh, it's Darcy. Oh, so, it's close. Darcy. so close. So close. I know exactly when it was as well. Is that the wrong music, but yeah. Mm. But I th- I think the next one is gonna be an easier one. Okay. The next one is what about Harry Styles? He's pretty sexy. I have to agree with the main man Harry. <laughs> yeah. Well wow. uh-huh. he, he was pretty sexy, yeah. Nice. <laughs> mm. uh, the next one is you're not we have two more. Oh well, is you're not allowed to say the S word. Nick, Nick. I remember yeah. that, that one. That's a video circling around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Mm. Okay. And the last one is my favorite line of the show. Don't let anyone make you disappear. Ooh. Don't let anyone make you disappear. We haven't had Darcy yet. But um, I'm going to say Darcy. No, no, Darcy. Okay. I'm getting. It was the Elden, wasn't it? Or... Not even. It Ellen. wasn't. It wasn't one of it the main student. cast. Yeah, oh, it wasn't a student. student. Oh, oh, it, was. it wasn't a student. Oh, okay, so yeah, uh, yeah. I know who it was. <laughs> yeah. That's annoying. I just didn't get the Toby. I didn't see him. That's annoying, guys. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it's okay we won't tell him <laughs> as long as he doesn't watch this and if he does toby ignore what just happened mm-hmm. <laughs> all right um, now that we now that we've got a fun round of trivia out of the way we just want to talk a little bit more about sort of your origins in acting and what inspired you to begin acting and um, I know you're also you study media and film production now, and so like 
yeah. like just your interest in general in the entertainment industry how did all, all that get started like how old mm -hmm. were you what was your first experience with it like yeah um so my mom's an actress as well okay. so she kind of um like got me into acting uh like she got me doing theater um like classes and stuff uh but i'd say i like i still i always wanted to be a director though um so that was sort of it was sort of fueling my dream to be a director um getting into acting because i sort of wanted to see the other side of the camera um and it went pretty well and i enjoy it a lot so um that's how i sort of really got into um like properly acting uh but I'm trying to think what age I probably would have been. I probably went to um, theatre, like class, uh, probably when I was around like 14, 13, and did that for a few years. Um, but I say when I was like 14, 15 is when I really got a lot of motivation to be a director. So um, mm -hmm. I worked on my acting as well quite a lot. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's we how we yeah, thinking about it. We saw that you uh, have st made some short films in the past. Um, what inspired, what specifically really do you enjoy about directing? Um, I, I love films. Like, I just love films so much. Um, and it, it interests me so much as well. Uh, when I was around like 14, sort of, um, I, I like watched my first Tarantino film. And I just like, I loved the way it looked, sort of, like, how, like visually how it looked. Um, and that kind of got me into film. Uh, but then I sort of uh, thought, like, ventured more into like the psychological side of film, like, um, and it just interested me so much, like how, you know, if you change like the angle slightly of the camera, it can convey like a whole different emotion. Um, and like every single detail like i mean once you like analyze films you can't enjoy a film again to be honest that's what they will say that's what they say in film studies class if you want to enjoy film leave now because um you'll just be analyzing whenever you watch it but yeah i really enjoy that side of it um and directing gives you more creative freedom than acting definitely um and yeah my brain works very practically so all these elements combining like fusing to make uh one like feeling or um like vibe you might say to a film um yes yeah, just really interests me uh about it yeah mm -hmm. and we were checking out some of your short films and we saw that you made one about having adhd and you don't have to talk about this if you're not comfortable but you are currently sitting in a room in an interview with two other people who also have ADHD. Yeah. So like, okay. yeah. And so, I, <laughs> so like, we got a little squad going right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> we love to hear it. Um, is yeah. is like talking about like personal experiences like that, like conveying like personal emotions and experiences. Is that something that you're wanting to do in your filmmaking in the future? Um. Yeah. Definitely. I think. Um. Because I I feel like the UK definitely needs a change. Um. In the way they deal with ADHD in the schools um mm -hmm. it's tough because you know state schools they're not really getting the funding they can to deal with that but um yeah it's sort of uh i definitely want to make films about adhd and show people like educate people on what's uh, like to have it um because in my opinion like you guys can probably testify but it's more of a superpower than a negative to be perfectly honest like that's when that's when I got my motivation when I was 14 that's when I got diagnosed for ADHD and um I just turned it like the school sort of yeah like they they put, like put some things in place to help me but it was still pretty tough but that just fueled my dream so much more to want to do acting like directing um yeah and like when you find something you're interested with like you guys will probably know but when you find something you're interested you can hyper focus like it's crazy like i go i'll oh, go yeah. like five hours just writing screenplays like and you can just do it like your brain just working so fast like you just want to get it down and work but yeah I, I absolutely love having it, so. 
you are totally speaking our language here. That's kind of what Melita and I are very much like too. And I totally agree with you. Like the the narrative and just people's perspective of ADHD is is so much different than what it actually is to live with it. And I, you have my full support and I really look forward to seeing anything in the future that you do regarding that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so we're kind of getting to the end now. We're just gonna, I think, end, end with some really fun, lighthearted questions about you, uh, some sort of trivia type things. Melina, do you wanna? Yeah, so this is basically just a really random assortment of different questions just for the audience to get to know you better. Um, okay, so the first question is, if you could switch bodies with someone for, enti- for an entire day, who would you switch with? Oh, that's a good one. That is a very good one. Switch bodies with someone for an entire day. Um, I feel like I want to go footballer. I want to go footballer. Um, because I mean, I I like I try my hardest in football, but sometimes, <laughs> no, it's not very good. But um, yeah, I'll probably switch with like Ronaldo or something because like the looks as well. Uh, I would not mind being in his body for a day at all. To be honest. Okay, another question is, what is the best advice you have ever received? Ooh, the best advice I've ever received. Um, uh, I guess, um, sort of, I'm still sort of, um, like, learning about that sort of thing, like, advice, like, uh, like the philosophical uh, side of things like mentality and stuff but um, I think one thing is just like stay positive like in like your mind is so hard sometimes but if you just stay positive everything will turn out alright and if you have a dream work for it because like I'm just a normal guy you know what I mean like I never like thought I'd be able to like working at Netflix, so I've, like Netflix series, all these amazing people. But um, I just worked for it, and you know it pays off. Um, yes, yeah, so just stay positive and work hard. Really, a bit cliche, but <laughs> yeah. That's no, I love I it. No, I the cliches. Yeah, I, I are, love it. Are cliches mm-hmm. for a reason? It's because they yeah. they matter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The next question is: If you have to pick a song to play every single time you enter a room, sort of like your walk-in song, what would it be and why? Walk-in <laughs> song every single time you come in a room. I'm trying to think, um, like, what I would want uh, forever, because <laughs> I walk into a lot of rooms in, <laughs> in my time. So I think, I think, like, a high beat thing would get a bit annoying. But, um, how about you'll never walk alone you'll never walk alone that's a lovely one yeah I feel like that's a, a solid walk. choice <laughs> turning around you'll never walk into the room but yeah that's what I'm gonna go for okay the next one is what is the your favorite place you've traveled to so far ooh that's a good one as well um I haven't done much traveling in my time yet but uh I go to Denmark every year, um, and that's just such a beautiful place, like, mm-hmm. so lovely, like, all the people are so nice, you know, you just feel safe, like, it's a, it's a good break from London, I can't lie, but um, it's sort of the same sort of weather, though, so <laughs> the weather side's not great, but, it, yeah, it's a lovely place, um, I love Is there city. anywhere on your bucket list of places you haven't been to that you'd really like to go to soon? Everywhere. Everywhere. I want to see it all. I want to see it all. But um, something specifically, I definitely want to go somewhere tropical um, soon. I've never been anywhere tropical. Um, nice. Also, the Amazon rainforest. I would oh, love wow. to go see that. Yeah. I feel like the humidity would be a bit crazy, but um, <laughs> yeah, I would love to go see that. Uh, all that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, and going back to where you come from, if your hometown was a food, what food would it be? <laughs> this is UK as well, so it will be a very <laughs> English food. Um, I was born in Holman Hospital, sort of like Hackney area, so I've got to think Hackney. <laughs> Hackney, what food would Hackney be? <laughs> That's sort of a weird one, but... Um, 
probably like probably just like a classic bang is a mass bang is a mash that's that's a uk uh thing so that's just sausage and mash um classic classic to be honest a bit boring a bit boring but um it's classic. okay to stick to the classics uh-huh yeah the classics are classic for a reason Mm-hmm. Okay, if you didn't have the career you do right now, what would you be up to? Well, I'm still in college now, so um, I guess I'll just be going to college. But uh, um, I definitely, uh, if I was if I was doing another job now instead of acting, um, definitely anything in the film industry like literally anything like I, I would just like i'd love to be a part of it um of course directing is the main goal but yeah take anything over there to be honest mm-hmm. okay and with this next question we gotta stick to the british stereotype do you know your hogwarts house <laughs> i actually do i actually do i did the um i did the test like three four years ago though so <laughs> it could have changed but i got gryffindor so happy days. Um, I hope that hasn't changed, but <laughs> happy days. It's it's a classic. Gryffindor is like the house that most people want to be in. I think. Yeah, yeah. I, it's on the it's the website, right? Like uh, that's how you find out. There's that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think I did it through there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a good one. Okay. Gryffindor, to be honest, yeah. Mm. okay we have two more questions and then we're already wrapping the interview up so which fictional character do you think would be most exciting to meet in real life Ooh, that is a very good one i watch a lot of lot of films so i think oh most exciting to meet in real life um I have to. That is so hard. I'll probably say. Um... I just can't. Uh... I'll just say. This is hard. This is hard. <laughs> this is so I mean, so many I can see the the, the, the cogs turning in your brain. Yeah, you're trying like, to like come up with anything. Uh huh. <laughs> uh, probably either one of the two main guys from Pulp Fiction. Okay, that's a good Pulp answer. Fiction. I like that. They seem, yeah, be they, they seem. Bad, but <laughs> exciting to meet. And yeah, yeah. I bet they're lovely in person. Oh. Okay, the <laughs> last, <laughs> the last question that we have is: What is your most useless talent? Useless talent. Ooh. Um. What's my useless talent? Uh. I mean. Useless talent. I try and make my time as useful as possible. So, um, come on, man. But thinking about it now. <sighs> what about if you could have a talent? What about, like, do you have a talent that you wish you had, but you don't? Something that you wish you were Ooh. good at? Yeah. I mean, I wish I was good at a lot of things, to be perfectly <laughs> honest. Uh, definitely uh, piano, though. I've been, tr- I've been trying to learn piano. Yeah. Um, and it's a bit hard, but um, I'm like the people that just go. Yeah. <laughs> people who could just sight read, I'm like, mm-hmm. wow. Another Will, level Will of like. Amazing. <laughs> Will is incredible. At the piano. He shows us a couple, and like his fingers are just moving like that, and how they can just go in place like every time is insane to me. But yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah that's, that would be my top. For yeah. sure. Well, that is it for all the questions that we had. Thank you so much again for joining us. We have had such a good time learning more about you, hearing more about Heartstopper. Um, I hope the audience has enjoyed learning more about you. Um, and I really hope to one day see your name in the big screen saying directed by Cormac. So uh, we wish you all the best luck uh, with everything. Um, good luck with your classes. I know you're probably finishing up exams right now, right? Yeah. Um, 
I'm actually in first year of college, so okay. no exams yet. But, okay, um, cool. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, regardless, we wish you all the best and thank you again. And I hope everyone has enjoyed this episode of Girl Stuff Podcast. And that's Girl Stuff.